right as you start scrolling the screen, you'll have your first set of rings. It's a simple optional challenge to get you used to your jump mechanic. Shortly after is a jump through platform with the ring box. You can't hit it from underneath like a brick block in Mario. You have to land on top of it, taking advantage of, you know, Sonic bouncing off of things. A motobug is shortly after as well. This is the Goomba of Sonic, a basic ground moving enemy. After the motobug is a buzz bomber. They fly across the screen and shoot diagonally downward when Sonic is within a certain horizontal distance. Buzz Bomber is not that threatening from its movement because of how Sonic is a giant screw attack. Its projectile is the most threatening thing about it and that's only if you stop moving. This first Buzz Bomber is positioned in such a way that it'll fly into you if you're on the platform unless you crouch. Right away you have your first secret. There's a hidden spring in the tree where you can get extra rings. There's really no other clues. You just have to barely notice the sprite or stumble onto it by accident. Next you run up a slope where you experience how they affect Sonic's movement. You then come onto a bridge where you see your first chopper, which are the basic jumping enemies in the game that move straight up and down. The rings in the air provoke you to jump, and they're placed at Sonic's maximum jump height. So depending on how you run through the level, it can get you to jump clear over the chopper without having to react to it. The chopper is not set to jump that high. This first one is jumping only one tile off the bridge, compared to Sonic's maximum jump height of three tiles. Moving on, there's another secret. There's a hidden invincibility power up in the trees. And much like the spring from before, there's no other clue than to just barely notice it. It's kind of neat how like, we're, we're not even like two or three screens into the level and there's already like two secrets. There's a lot going on. Next we have another set of rings which usher you down the slope and up the first curved ramp in the game. Here you get to experience more of Sonic's unique slope physics. Next we come to these stair-stepped platforms with uh, crab meats on them. The crab meats are slow moving enemies that shoot projectiles from their claws out of both ends when they turn around. However, you need to be hanging around for a long time for that to happen. Uh, normally enemies on higher ground are more dangerous, but because of Sonic's ball form, they're actually made easier. The other crab meat is next to a rock where you encounter solid objects in the level. As is usual as it may seem to point this out, uh, sprites like this would normally be a background object in games in this time period. The rings on top of it are total freebies though, I'm not sure what the point of that is. Next you come to your second bridge with two choppers on them. This time there's no rings on the bridge to guide you and get you to prematurely jump over the choppers. The first chopper doesn't jump high, but the second one does. It jumps about two tiles high, so it's tuned so that you can still completely jump over it. One flaw in the design of the choppers is how they don't follow the rule that Potoboos from Super Mario Bros do of appearing on screen first before you come across them. Meaning you can play in such a way that you spawn them off screen and as you're moving over the bridge, the choppers come out of nowhere and hit you with not enough time to react. Past another rock in the way and another elevated platform are two buzz bombers. The buzz bombers stop in such a way that it's easy to jump through them without getting hit by the projectile. It's because they take about half a second to fire. This is good tuning. We then come to the first spring in the game where the level branches out. Once you jump on the spring to land to the other side, the rings influence you to keep moving forward to avoid the crumbling ledge. The rock right after the crumbling ledge kind of acts as a stopper. You can still jump over the spring and reach the crumbling ledge if you're moving fast enough. If you do fall down, you can go left to where there's a spring between some spikes to go back up and try again. The buzz bomber here is positioned in such a way that if you jump from the ledge where the boulder is, you'll land right on it and then bounce to the area where the checkpoint is. It doesn't really present much meaningful challenge if you were to just drop down to move over the two crumbling ledges because it's too high and it's so easy to move past. The gaps between the crumbling ledges are thin enough that Sonic can just run right over them. If you do fall though, you'll land in a safe area on the lower path. There's no jerk placement here. At the checkpoint are two platforms that move left and right. These are your first moving platforms in the game. 
From there, there's a series of platforms that drop after you land on them, and some more buzz bombers along the way. The buzz bombers here are placed so that they can come at you while you're on these platforms. Here, the buzz bomber is uh, more effective in being a sort of danger to the player. If you're successful, you can get a shield power up on top of the loop de loop. Now, before I go too far, let's go back to the spring where the paths branch out and see what happens when you fall down. So I already mentioned how if you go left, you can find a spring to go back up. To the right is an optional challenge of a spring in between spikes where you can grab some rings. Otherwise, you can use the slope to gain some speed and jump over the spikes altogether. Running up the hill, there's some more spikes. The spikes here are spaced apart more, so they can counter the player trying to uh, long jump over them. After that, there's a row of ring boxes, which are you know, pretty free for falling down a lower path like this. On the next platform is a motobug. Uh, the motobug doesn't actually go off ledges though, so you're not in any danger if you're stumbling around on the ring boxes for whatever reason. Although since one of them is the invincibility, uh, it more likely serves as something to give you to, you know, kind of run, run and crash through. After the motobug is a kind of odd placement of spikes here. Uh, I believe their purpose is meant to say that, hey, you're not supposed to go this way, go back onto the, the main path above. Um, but you can, you know, use that invincibility power up uh, and go right past them and kind of just jump to your death. I don't know why they couldn't just make it a wall, though. Returning to the checkpoint, in the middle path to the loop-de-loop, -loop, there's the first Neutron in the game. Because you're going downhill and gaining speed, he's way too slow for you to even realize what he does. The red-eye Neutrons effectively just drop down and then move at the position that Sonic's on. This is the first fast section in the game. You go through the loop-de-loop -loop, and then you go through this uh, little tunnel here where Sonic is then catapulted into the air. These level elements are what make Sonic so <laughs> iconic. But in between the loop-de-loop -loop and uh, this shuttle, for lack of a better word, are these up-down moving platforms. You can use them to reach the barrier power-up that's on top of the loop-de-loop -loop if you didn't take the upper pathway with the, the dropping platforms from before. From there, you can take those platforms to head to um, an upper layer which has its own sort of tunnel section. I'll talk about that more later. From here to this upper tunnel are four red-eye neutrons. Kind of like before, it's really easy to run past all of them before they can do anything. But if you do take it somewhat slower, it is a cool kind of ambush moment. From the up-down moving platforms is another up-down moving platform which then goes to a left-right moving platform to a second upper path and you get rewarded with a whole floor of rings. Back on the lower path, where you're going through those two tunnels, there's actually a checkpoint in between the two of them. What's noteworthy about the checkpoint being placed in between the two tunnels like this, is it affects how Sonic is able to gain speed in order to be catapulted into the air. Although I should say, so long as you're holding right, you're pretty much guaranteed to grab a good chunk of rings. Although I think if you play it just right, you can use both of the buzz bombers to grab almost all the rings. I've never been able to grab all the rings myself just yet. The middle path has you go through a tunnel where there's a moving platform and another buzz bomber. This one I do think there is a little jerk placement because if you go through normal, you'll run over the buzz bomber but then land straight into the second one with taking a hit, which is kind of bullshit. If you jump though, you can get some rings and land on the second ledge in between the two yellow eye neutrons. If you mess up, you fall into the lower path. The upper path has you running downstairs of floating platforms, which looks awkward as hell. The last one is a drop platform with a left-right moving platform next to it, both of which are above the mass of rings. If you jump from the moving platform, uh, you may run into the fish, which is, you know, some more BS placement. This is not a place where you can do a leap of faith. So on the lower path past the boulder are two yellow eye neutrons. The difference between them and the red eye ones is they just shoot to the left and then they disappear. Because these two yellow eye neutrons are in the air, 
they can shoot Sonic if he's making a poorly timed jump. Continuing on is another array of rings. I think these are set so that you can grab them all in one jump if you're moving fast enough. That's good ring placement. And then past the spike is another uh, crab meat on an elevated platform. This is a, a kind of a redundant setup because uh, there's really no difference between the way this crab meat is placed compared to how the first two were. On the upper path you have these yellow-eyed neutrons along with the buzz bomber which can make uh, quite the tricky situation of bullets. After that is another bridge with two choppers on them. There's not really much difference uh, compared to the ones before with how they're placed. I think they're like eight pixels closer together and that's about it. You then drop down to a slope where there's a red eye neutron that can come from behind. Although once again, it's easy to run past this. The rock and spikes that the neutron is in between appear to be designed to prevent the player from falling into the lower area by going backwards. I don't know why they can't just use a wall. You could see this same setup earlier where the crumbling ledge was too. Last we have another jump through platform with a buzz bomber. But this buzz bomber is positioned below the jump through platform so it's not like the first one where it could still fly into you. If anything this one is uh, positioned in a way where you can say it's actually easier to avoid it. And if you pay close enough attention there is a ring box hidden in the trees right before the edge of the platform here. And there is an up down moving platform that I guess is for the purpose of you going into the upper path and approaching it from the right if you were from if you came at it from the lower path. So it gives, does give you a way to go back up and explore if you fell down into the lower area. In conclusion, there's a lot of ideas being expressed in this first level. With regards to level elements, you have jump through platforms, moving platforms, bridges, slopes, curves and ramps, loop-de-loops, curved tunnel chutes, you have spikes and springs, crumbling ledges, solid rocks, ring boxes, invincibility power-ups, and secrets. With enemy elements, there are six enemy types in total. And when you look at how enemies are placed into the level to challenge the player, note that most of the enemies don't move along the ground, so Sonic is able to run past many of them before they can go through their routine to endanger him. But this doesn't mean they're superfluous. Enemies like the Buzz Bombers and Red Eye Neutrons on the main path are more for pressuring the player to keep moving forward and not to be a hard obstacle. The Buzz Bombers double as objects for the player to bounce off of too. And for the enemies that are on the ground, they're typically on a platform so that Sonic can't accidentally run into them, such as the crab meats and motobugs. Choppers don't move along the ground, but they're the enemy that you run the most risk of running into. But notice how every appearance of the chopper in the level has something that slows you down, whether it's moving uphill or jumping up to higher ground or over a rock. The same is true of the yellow eye neutrons, which are placed right after a rock or alongside a wall where the player has to react quick and keep jumping forward before they get shot. So even the rocks are cleverly placed relative to other level elements and enemies so that if they don't slow you down and you jump over them, you can take out whatever enemy is coming up. Which is also thanks to Sonic's jump mechanic being designed so that he doesn't need to land on top of an enemy like in other platforms. He just needs to be in ball form, which is every time he jumps. I wouldn't give this level 5 stars though. The things that I would critique this first level is how you get rewarded more for falling onto a lower path than on the hard to reach upper path, how they didn't really have a good way of making the topmost path converge back onto the main path, and some of the enemy placements are redundant, like the last crab meat, choppers, and buzz bomber, but the majority have a clear and distinct gameplay idea to them. So this is a solid first level that does a good job of conveying what Sonic is.